Tifab. Aha, 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 aha. So welcome back to another video. In this video, we really want to talk about cervical cancer. Yes. So we are in the reproductive health center of Koleku Teaching Hospital. With me here is my in charge, my boss, Bakupe. You already know my in charge. Her name is Evelyn Atiyo, senior nursing officer of Productive Health Center, Columbia Teaching Hospital. So she will take us through cervical cancer and some things about cervical cancer. We already have videos on it on my channel, but this we are doing something about cervical cancer in this unit. So she wants to take you through all everything about cervical cancer. So stick and stay with us. Do not go anywhere. Greetings to everyone. My name is Evelyn Atiyo, as she said in the introduction. And today we are going to talk about cervical cancer. In Ghana, cervical cancer is rated as the next or the second leading cause of death among women. And lots of people do not know how their service looks like. Some will even wonder where their services are. Some will not even know where to even go for some of these screening services. So first of all, we start with what cervical cancer is. As you already know, January is a month of cervical cancer and a lot of awareness has been created we don't just create awareness, what do we do about it? How do we get the women to come in to screen? Is there any uh, mechanism for reduction for the price of cervical cancer screening? Cervical cancer is a sexually transmitted disease. I know some of you will be opening your mouth, yes. It is transmitted when a man and a woman have sex. And it happens that both of them or either of them has a virus. The virus that causes cervical cancer is called the human papilloma virus or HPV in short. So assuming I have a partner who has the HPV virus and we have sex, he gives the virus to me and then the virus deposits itself on my cervix. So you can see, this is how our cervix looks like. So those of you who don't know where your cervix or how it looks like, what I will tell you is that let's assume this is the way you're going to bath. Just squat. Put a finger into your vagina. Your finger actually hits your cervix and that is your cervix. And that is where cervical cancer affects. So, what are some of the risk factors or what are the behaviors that we do that predisposes us to this virus? So one, we are talking about multiple sexual partners because I told you it's sexually transmitted. So if you have sex with A, you have sex with B, you have sex with C, it is likely that you are going to pick a virus from any of these gentlemen or these ladies. Two, we are talking about people who have low immunity. So what it means is that um, if you don't exercise, you don't take in a lot of fruits, you don't take in a lot of water, your immunity naturally will go down. But if you have a very low immunity and you sleep with a man, it is likely you're going to pick this virus simply. We talk about ladies who have sex at any age, that's what we call early quieter. So it means that having sex at a tender age of like 10 years, your cervix is not really matured. So the moment you have sex and a man has the virus and gives to you, it attaches itself to the virus cervix. And then with time, as the years goes by, the, the virus changes the nature of your service and then cancer will just set in. Thirdly, we are talking about the fact that you have a, a wife who died of cervical cancer. It means that me becoming a new wife to this my husband, he has a virus, he's just going to give to me and then it will just deposit on my service. The time it changes into cervical cancer. And then we talk about people who have so many children, multiple death. Because we are saying that as you age, everything in the body system and reduces the strength of everything the body system reduces so the nature of our service is going to be fragile because we are giving birth to so many kids like the children passing through the vagina so it weakens the cervix so when you have sex with somebody who has a virus you are easy to contact the virus from this man and then we talk about women who have who smoke uh -huh. so that one also reduces your immunity people who have hiv are really prone to this um, cancer because their immunity is already lowered by the hiv that they have so now, how would I know I have cervical cancer? But what happens is that if you don't test, you can't see. But there are signs and symptoms that you see that will prompt you to come to the hospital. But that one happens if the, the, the cancer has gotten to the latter stage. Because in the initial stage when you pick the virus, you don't have any, any, any disease, you don't have any symptoms, you are very fit, you don't fall sick, you look healthy, you look beautiful, you glow. So you wouldn't know you have any, any, any infection in there. But as time goes on and it gets to the cancer stage, that is when you are going to see things or you are going to feel things in your body. So one of them is that women have an offensive vaginal discharge. When you take off your panty, it smells so bad, it's so fishy. It calls for alarm, you need to visit the hospital. You have sex, after sex you bleed. You're not supposed to bleed after sex. You have pain when you have sex. You're not supposed to have pain when you have sex. 
You have lower, severe lower abdominal pain any time, any day. Severe backache. So these are all signs and symptoms that will prompt you to come to the hospital. And then the doctor will say, okay, let me do a pap smear for you to see what is really wrong. Mind you, there are other infections or diseases that will present with these symptoms. That is why we don't just say that anyone experiencing of their, anything of the above I mentioned has a vital cancer. The only way to screen and then differentiate is to do the pap smear. So after I've done the pap smear, what's next? So depending on the results of the individual or a lady, management is available. So let's assume I do my pap smear and my result comes out negative. There are ways I need to prevent the disease from occurring. So what happens is that we have the ways of prevention. So we have the primary prevention. So for the primary prevention, what we are saying is that abstinence, if you are not ready, don't have sex. Especially to the young ladies. If you are not ready, don't have sex. Two, so, uh, be faithful. So what we are saying is that, yes, we can't say do not be in a relationship. You can be in a relationship, but just be faithful to your partner. Because I said multiple sexual partners are the risk to survival cancer. So just be faithful to one partner. We are talking about condom use because I said it is sexually transmitted. So when you have having sex without a condom, you are likely to pick the virus from a man or from a woman. And D, we talk about delayed sexual intercourse. Also goes to our young ladies. 13 years, as early as 10 people want to try sex, no. Delayed sexual activity. Because I told you, immature cervix is a risk for cervical cancer. And then we talk about the secondary prevention. So it means that right now I have the virus. What do I do about it? So what we are talking about is to screen. So it's either you do a pap smear or you do an HPV DNA. So what it does is that with the HPV DNA, it goes into your genes to find out whether you have even picked the virus in any form. Or we want to find out how is the state of your cervix through the pap smear. And then we talk about vaccination. So right now there are vac vaccines available against um, cervical cancer. So what happens is that for a sexually active lady, what you need to do is that once you've had sex before, then it means that you are at risk, so you need to screen first. So if you want to do vaccination, we encourage that you do the HPV DNA that goes into your genes to find out whether you have any of these viruses. If you realize that you don't have any of them, go ahead and we give you the vaccine. Or what we can do is that I don't want to do vaccination, but I want to do regular screening. We, are, we, we advise that between two to three years, a woman should always test for cervical cancer. So let's assume that a woman has done the vaccination. What's next? So what is what we are saying is that to do a vaccination, um, if you are between the ages of nine years to twenty-six years and you do, and you are a virgin and you do vaccination, you get a hundred percent protection. So it means that it's not likely that you are going to acquire the virus in any way. But if you are a virgin beyond twenty-six or sexually active beyond twenty-six, when you take the vaccine, you don't get a hundred percent protection. But what vaccine does is that. When we give it to you, it goes into the body. The body is able to turn it into antibodies to give us protection. But the more you age, your body is not able to turn this vaccine into antibodies to give you the protection. So I can do the vaccination, but screening still continues. I can do the vaccination, but I will still get the HPV virus anyway. Yes, that is why it is important that when you do the vaccine, screening still continues if you were not a virgin at that time. And then you were within the age bracket we are talking about, the 9 to 26 years. Tertiary prevention means that right now the woman has a cancer, what are we going to do for her? So what we are going to do for her, depending on where the cancer is, it's in stages. So let's assume the cancer is only confined to the cervix. What do we do? It means that we are going to take a portion of the cervix out. Or the cancer has spread towards the womb, what do we do? We are going to take the womb and the cervix out. Or we realize that the cancer is in the last stage, which means that it has gone beyond the cervix, gone beyond the womb, and then now it's going to the adjoining organs, like the kidney, the liver. So what are we going to do for this woman? What we'll do is that yeah, we will take out the woman and the cervix, but this woman needs to do chemotherapy and radiotherapy because the cancer has spread beyond the womb. After we are done with this, what, what's next? So let's assume that my womb was removed with my cervix. Is it that I am free of cancer? No. It means that you were when you pick the, the, the HPV, the cell changes occur and the womb was taken off. The fact that the woman was taken off, it is likely that cell changes can occur again. So even if my womb has been removed, the space that is left, I need to do a pap smear every two to three years of that space to be sure that the cancer will not occur again and spread to other organs. Because the first engagement was just confined to my womb. So that's what we are talking about. So um, what is happening now in the reproductive health in Olibo is that every year, and because we want a lot of women to scream, but we realize that 
Mm -hmm. Most of the course, that's why most of them are not coming. So we talk to our labs and the labs that we work with, and there's some sponsors. So they come in and then they help us. So what we do is that we subsidize the price of the continuous screening for the women so that they can come in. So this year, hopefully, God willing, we are going to start on the 14th of February. That's the Valentine's Day. So you can put that as a Valentine's Day for yourself. Yes. Just walk in and scream. Mm -hmm. So what we are doing is that for the, the, the cups near, the normal one is a liquid based cytology. It used to be 150. Now we are going to reduce it to 90 cents. The HPV DNA, which is going to look into your genes to find out whether you have any of the viruses, is going to reduce from 300 to 200 cents. And then the other one, which is the conventional pub. Which is going for 120 is not going to 20 cities. But for the 20, the good news is that for the 20 cities, we are doing it for postnatal mothers. Mothers who have just delivered from six weeks to eight weeks. They qualify to get a 20%, sorry, to get a conventional pap at 20 cities. But for those of us who have already delivered, we are not pregnant and all that, we can either choose between the 90 and the 200 to get screened. Because without screening, we wouldn't know how the state of your service is. You can be very beautiful, you can dress nicely, but there may be a problem with your service. So we need you to come in on the 14th. So we are starting from the 14th to the 29th of April. So please rush and come in and have your cervical cancer screening done. The Reproductive Health Center of Colonization Hospital. So, so that's a picture showing the various types of different types of cervix that we have. So as you can see, the top one are very normal. So this one is someone who has inflammation. Inflammation means that your cervix is red. Yes, this could be a very normal process of the cervix. It doesn't mean that you have cervical cancer. As you can see, on the third row, you can see we have some of the cervix that are a little bit whitish. Yes, this means that these women are developing change on their cervix. I am not saying cancer. They are developing the change. So at this stage, if she doesn't do anything about it, because she doesn't have any symptom anyway, she's still at home. By the time we realize, the next five, ten years, it turns into the cancer. And this is what we are seeing now. So what we are saying is that we don't want to get to this stage. Even if we are here, we should screen so that this part will be detected. When you get here, there is something that can be done for you. So let's assume that we do it and realize that you have these white patches on your service. We are going to just scrape that white patches off for you. And then this becomes a treatment for you because we have removed the disease part. Uh -huh. So when we get here, there is nothing we can do for you. That's the cancer stage. No one, there is nothing. There might be little we can do, but you might not be able to save your life. So, ladies, what I am saying is that ladies, gentlemen, whoever, husbands can tell their wives, boyfriends can tell their girlfriends, parents can tell their children to come and screen. Screening is the only way to detect a woman who is going to have cervical cancer in the future. As I said, these are changes, but not cancer. So, when you come around this stage, yes, you can be treated. But when you come when you are here, nothing can be done. So as I said, the vaccination, now we are starting from nine years, both for boys and girls. Because we are saying that we don't know who is going to abuse your son. That's at the age of nine years. Maybe there's a big woman abusing your son, you might not know. And that one has a virus, he gives it to your son. Now your son becomes a career. So interestingly, we don't talk about the men, because we have not recorded so many cases of penile cancer. But they will get a penile cancer when they have the HP virus for a very long time. But it is the women who receive first, who have the issue first, because men have a higher immunity than women. So we are going to force it immediately. But a man can keep this virus in there and become a career. So the moment you, you have a partner, you have sex with her, you are going to transfer the virus onto the, the woman, and then the woman will start having issues. So we are starting from nine years. So from nine years, she needs to take, he needs to take the person by two doses. But another worrying thing is that the person is not free. You pay for the person. That's where most of our issues come from because the vaccine is expensive. Now, we have two forms of the vaccine. One is called Severus. So, Severus contains the HPV that causes the cervical cancer. That's a 16 and 18. And this will cause about 90% of cancer. This will cause cervical cancer. 90%. That's a virus. 16 and 18. So, the Severus is made of the 16 and 18. So, that one goes for 350 cities per shot. If you are late beyond 15 years, you need to take three shots. The first day you take one, you pay 350. One month after, you pay 350. And then five months after, you pay another 350, making three shots. When you calculate this amount, it's a lot of money. The other one is called Gardasil. That one contains four HPV viruses. So it contains the 16, the 18, the 6, and the 11. So now the new addition is the 6 and the 11. So what the 6 and 11 does is that 
a process against genital warts. Because genital warts is also caused by HPV, but it is not likely to cause cervical cancer. It's a low risk virus. But because we realize that a lot of ladies or gentlemen come with genital warts, but what happens is that if I should pick a genital wart, this is likely that I can pick the cervical cancer, HPV as well. And so this virus gives you protection against all the HPVs. And that one is made for 480 per shot. So first day you take the 480, one month I take another 480, five months you take the another 480. I think prevention is better than cure. As I said, if you are in the age brackets, 9 to 25 years, then you qualify to take the vaccine, then you get 100% protection. But beyond that, even if you take the vaccine, you need to screen with them. Between every two to three years, you need to come and screen. That's the only way we have to we'll know if there's anything going on with your cervix. Okay, so with the procedure, cut here is not painful. This is another issue of ladies because it will be painful. It will be that. It is not painful. What happens is that it's a little bit uncomfortable. But what happens is that the issue we are going to put in the vagina to locate your cervix to create a little bit of discomfort. When we are done locating your cervix, we just use this brush. Go in there and then take a fluid from outside the cervix and then inside. So the inside in actually enters the womb. And then we take it to the lab. So please do not be afraid of this procedure. When we are done, within the, 10, 50, the next 10 15 minutes, we should be done and should be out of the procedure room. And then spending 10 to 15 minutes to do your faith on our survival concept, it's really important rather than you saying that it would be painful for you to stay at home and then report to us when it is very good. So I'll be assisting a lot of you at the Reproductive Health Center from the 14th of February on to the 29th of April. Any bed touches with any way. So uh, in one of my videos, I also spoke about cervical cancer and some people asked some questions. Uh, can a virgin undergo the pap smear screening? Virgins um, have never had penetrative sex before. So we are assuming that or we think that they don't need a pap smear. But what happens is that some people are virgins, but they don't have penetrative sex. You know, there are other forms of sexual activity. That is, as you say, some people do not prefer penetration, they prefer licking and all those things. Yes. And brushing. And brushing. They want to play with the genitals. Because the virus are deficit at the genital areas. So the moment you start playing with the genital areas, you are licking, you are doing all that. It is likely that you are going to pick a virus, even though you are a virgin and you never had penetrative sex. So, what happens is that we need to counsel this lady to find out how her sexual behavior is. Uh, if she had never had penetrative sex, we don't recommend the pap smear. But if she has had that sexual activity that is likely to be disposed to the cervical cancer, why not? We go ahead and train them. So, I hope your question mm -hmm. has been answered. So, if you've never had penetrative sex, but you've been doing licking, brushing, and all those things, please come. Let's screen you. Then we want to be sure you are okay and fit. So I hope you learned a lot of things. I will not even say a thing or two. You learned, I know you learned a lot of things from this. We want to thank my noble <laughs> senior <laughs> officer for educating us on this, this issue, this cervical cancer topic, because a lot of people are not aware of it. We go on radio uh, stations, television stations saying it, but people still do not no, and they are not aware. So we're creating awareness. We hope that people will come and get tested and screened. So thank you once again for watching. And we'll see you in our next video. If you have any questions, you can put them in the comments section. We will film another video and answer them for you. So once again, thank you. Say bye. Bye.